Lithium-ion batteries are used in more and more devices such as electric cars, buses, drones and they are almost safe to use. However, there might not be enough lithium for every application. Look at this reaction of water and alkali metal. Sodium is much more reactive. Does it give more power for batteries too? Lithium-ion batteries are being manufactured in various form factors. Mobile phones, for example, the iPhone, are using a flat battery type with safer polymer electrolytes. Laptops have typically custom batteries, which consist of a cylindrical lithium-ion cell. This lithium-ion cell was taken from a Tesla. Let's see what's inside. It has a stainless steel container, which is pretty difficult to open. Now the electrolyte starts evaporating and it smells bad. The electrodes are rolled tightly together. Here is cathode on aluminum foil. Next layer is porous membrane and finally anode that is laminated on a copper foil. Typical electrolyte consists of hexafluorophosphate dissolved in a mixture of organic carbonates. Anode consists of graphite which can intercalate lithium ions. The cathode for example lithium cobalt oxide with lithium between cobalt oxide layers. During charging cobalt is oxidized and lithium will move out of the crystal structure. On the graphite side, the electrode is negatively charged and positive lithium cations start diffusing between graphite layers. When the battery is discharged, the reverse process happens. However, we can't use graphite as a negative electrode in sodium ion batteries because sodium does not intercalate into graphite as easily, so a different carbon is needed. Carbon from sodium ion batteries can be obtained from different organic precursors, for example sugar. This autoclave uses high pressures and temperatures to synthesize spherical carbon particles. Sugar solution is poured into the autoclave, which is then sealed and tightened firmly to withstand high pressures. Heating up to 200 degrees Celsius causes pressures up to 20 bars. Next, autoclave is inserted into the heater, where at elevated temperatures and pressures, porous carbon particles are formed. The product is washed with water and is vacuum filtrated. At this point, the powder contains various oxygen containing functional groups, so we need to treat it further. Now we're ready to paralyze this carbon using this furnace and we do it in argon atmosphere so the material would not burn. In this process, all other elements are removed from the carbon structure and the carbon becomes further graphitized which will create more sites for sodium absorption. Here you can see scanning electron microscopy image of hard carbon material. These particles are spherical with a very narrow size distribution. First the active material is weighed, then the binder and the conductive additive. They are all mixed together to make a homogeneous mixture, after which they are all put into a vial. And then the solvent is added, to make sure that all mixture becomes like a slurry. One of the biggest advantages of sodium ion batteries is that you do not have to use copper foil for the current collectors. Then the electrode slurry is cast onto the aluminum foil. A device called a doctor blade is used to make sure that the coating is even on the surface. Then the electrode is dried to evaporate the solvent. Once it's dry, it's measured for thickness and consistency and then the electrodes are cut out of the current collector in proper size for the next step. Next, they're put into a vacuum furnace to dry the electrodes completely to get rid of all water that can be trapped inside because the battery is very sensitive towards water. Cathode material is produced using glycine nitrate process in which all the vanadium salts are first dissolved and then the mixture is dropped into a hot crucible, which will lead to a violent combustion reaction to form fine particles. In the SEM image you can see that it's made of particles with a varying size distribution. Everything is handled in a glove box to avoid contact with moisture and air. Inside the glove box there is argon gas. The components are taken inside using a vacuum antechamber to get rid of air and moisture before putting everything inside. Special rubber gloves allow operating the glove box. Now the electrodes are weighed to establish the exact amount of electrode material. Coin cell is then assembled, first putting in the cathode, then the separator, the seal and the membrane. 
Electrolyte is sodium perchlorate dissolved in mixture of ethyl carbonate and diethyl carbonate. I drop some of the electrolyte on a separator. Then anode is added with the spacer and washer to make sure that everything is in good electrical contact. Finally, the cell is sealed. Now it's ready for electrochemical measurements. The cell operates at 3.4 volts and a lot of them had to be tested. It can easily light a white LED light. However, this is only a small prototype and it's a relatively new technology. However, sodium ion battery cell has 20% lower voltage, which leads to lower energy density than lithium ion batteries. The reason for developing sodium ion batteries is that sodium is more abundant and a lot cheaper than lithium. So if you want to store wind and solar energy that is not always available, we need to have huge battery banks. For the future, in order to make batteries safer, lots of companies are developing solid electrolyte batteries. This could also allow using alkaline metal panels without graphite. In order to further increase energy density, next generation lithium air and sodium air batteries are being developed to enable electrical air transport.